Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Life Science with KMD. Today I am going to explain about Fusarium. Fusarium belongs to the division Ascomycota. Most Fusarium species are soil fungi, have worldwide distribution. Some are plant pathogen causing root stem rot, vascular wilt or fruit rot. Several species have emerged as important opportunistic pathogen in humans. Other species cause storage rot or an important mycotoxin producers. Certain genus of Fusarium comprises of at least 300 phylogenetically distinct species, 20 different species, complexes and 9 monotypic lineages. Morphological description. Colonies are usually fast growing, pale or bright in color with or without colonial aerial mycelium. The color of the thallus vary with whitish to yellow or it could be pink or red or it could be seen in purple shades also. Some species of Fusarium typically produce both macro and microconidia from slender phyllites. Macroconidia are hyaline two to several celled fusiform to sickle shaped. See here you can see them in a uh, sickle shaped mostly with elongated Epical cells here the here you can see the elongated epical cells and pedicillate basal cells microconidia are one or two celled hyaline smaller than ma macroconidia pyriform fusiform to ovoid straight and curved clematospores may be present or absent. Coming to the reproduction, in case of Fusarium, it has been known to have no sexual reproduction or sexual stage, but produce three types of asexual spores. One is microconidia, second is macroconidia, third is chlamydospores. In case of microconidia are the most abundantly produced um, spores. Usually see the sexual reproduction will only takes place, asexual reproduction only takes place when there is a favorable condition. In case of microconidia, um, the most abundantly produced spores, these are most abundantly produced spores, they are oval, you can see here, they are oval, elliptical or kidney shaped and produced on aerial mycelium. Whereas this macroconidia which have 3 to 5 cells, here you can see there are 5 cells and have gradually pointed or curved edges and are found on sporodogia on the surface of diseased plant. Next is clamidospores. Clamidospores are usually produced on unfavorable condition and um, they are usually in single or in pairs but can sometimes be found in clusters or in short chains. They are round, thick walled spores produced within or terminal on an old mycelium or in macroconidia. Clamidospores, unlike other spores, can survive in soil for a long period of time. Now, I will explain the life cycle of Fusarium using one of the species of Fusarium called Fusarium oxysporum. It is a common soil pathogen and a saprophyte that feed on dead and decay organic matter. It survive in soil debris as a mycelium or as a spore types but most commonly recovered from soil 
as chlamydospores these pathogen spread in two basic ways it spread short distance by water splash and by plant uh, and by planting equipments and long distance and uh, um, for long distance by infected transplant and seeds fusarium oxysporum infect healthy plant by means of mycelium <coughs> or spores penetrating the plant root tip root wounds or lateral roots now this is the life cycle of fusarium oxysporium here first the mycelium produce any three types of spores which are asexual spores either it could be chlamydospores or macroconidia or microconidia now these two um, asexual spores that is microconidia and macroconidia are produced under favorable condition whereas this chlamydospores are produced under unfavorable condition later any of these spores will start germinating after that the penetration they start penetration through crack formed by emerging lateral roots the mycelium or germ tube attack the roots then the root penetration through wound the mycelium enters the vessels after that infection you we uh, after few days the ring of discolored vessels in secondary xylem has been observed see usually the xylem vessel in healthy stem or in a petiole will be seen in this way but when there is a infection you can see a collapsed and distorted vessel in the infected stem or the petiole then eventually the spores and the mycelium clog the vas uh, vascular vessel <coughs> which prevent the plant from <coughs> uptaking and translocating the nutrients the plant transpire more than it can transport the stomata start to close so due to this the lower branches begin to wilt later on the entire plant wilt and die so after the plant dies the fungus invade all the tissue sporulates and continue to infect neighboring plants so this is how the fusarium oxysporium life cycle will be seen in case of diseased plant thanks for watching my video please subscribe to my channel by clicking on subscription button subscription doesn't cost you any money to get a notification click on a bell icon do like and share this video with friends and family if you have any kind of feedback do share it on a comment box thank you